Greetings, greetings, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Bless his name tonight. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Our Yah is worthy to be praised. Welcome to Sabbath School Live. Welcome to Sabbath School Live. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praises tonight. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, YouTube. Shabbat Shalom, Facebook. Hallelujah. Praise the Most High. He's worthy of all the praises tonight. We glorify and uplift his name tonight. He's worthy. Bless his name tonight. He's worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy tonight. Shabbat Shalom. Yah is great, greatly to be praised. We magnify his name tonight. He is so worthy of all the praises. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness that you bestowed upon us tonight. We thank you for the move of the Rarak HaKadash, how you're moving today, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit tonight, Father. Father, we pray that you have your way today, Father, that your will and your way be done throughout the land, throughout the earth, O Yah. We ask this in your holy, righteous name. Continue to be with us, O Yah. Strengthen us on every side, Father. Wherever we stand in need of, strengthen us on every side, Father. Father, as we bring forth this word tonight, Father, we decrease that you may increase, O Yah, that you may get the glory, O Yah, out of everything that we say, Father. Not our will, but your will be done today, Father. Father, continually move on every beside Yah. Move according to your word because you said you sent your word to heal and deliver from destructions. Continue to heal and deliver, O Yah. Continue to tear down the yokes. Continue to tear down the things that are not like you, Father. We ask this, hallelujah, in your holy name tonight, Father. Father, we pray, Father, that you destroy, hallelujah, all the works of the adversary, O Yah. We know that we are troubled on every side, but not in distress. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down and we're not destroyed. And we thank you for that tonight. Toda Yahweh. Toda Hayamashia. Toda Yahweh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yah, today. Hallelujah. For just everything you've done. Thank you for keeping us six days, allowing us to do six days of labor. But we've now entered into the Shabbat, the holy of holies, the place Haya of you today, Father. We thank you today, Yah. Rebuke Ha Satan. Rebuke every word, every word, every idle word that is spoken. Hallelujah. That's coming out of the mouth of these false prophets. So, Yah, rebuke and bind it right now in the name of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Oh, Yah, strengthen this message tonight. Strengthen this study tonight, oh, Yah, that your word may be magnified, that you may be magnified according to your word in Psalms 40 and 16. Father, continually move upon those that are sick tonight, those that are shut in tonight, those that are dealing with the COVID, oh, Yah. Continue, Yahweh, to move tonight, Yah, with your healing virtue. Yahweh, Rafa, we call on your name tonight that you send forth your healing in virtue, that we all may be healed. Father, if there's anything that's not like you that's trying to come up against us, y'all put up your shield of protection. Put up your standard against it, oh y'all. And we will be so careful tonight to give your name praise, give your name glory, and give your name honor. Father, bless everyone that's coming on, everyone that's on now. Let your anointing rest, rule, and abide. And we will be so careful to give your name praise. Please, y'all, do these things. And we will forever be so careful to give your name praise, glory, and honor. In the name of Yahushua, Yahawasha, Hamashik, Yahshua the Messiah, our soon and coming King, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be unto Yah tonight. Praise be unto the Most High tonight. He is worthy of all praise. We thank Yah tonight for everyone that's under the sound of our voice tonight. Thank Yah, hallelujah, for the move of the Rarak HaKadash. He's moving right now, even as we speak, not by might nor by power, but by the Rarak 
HaKadosh. He's moving right now. And we thank Yah for that right now. Hallelujah. Father, we thank Yah for the goodness and his mercy that follows us. We thank Yah for everything that he's doing right now, even as we speak. We thank Yah for everything that he's doing right now, every single thing that he's doing right now. We thank Yah for that right now. Hallelujah. We thank Yah for everything that he's going to do. We thank Yah for everything that he's already done. Praise be unto the name of Yah tonight. He is worthy tonight. He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. To be praised. So we bless Yah tonight for everyone that's under the sound of our voice tonight. We thank Yah for all of you all. We say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Shabbat Shalom to everybody tonight. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to everybody tonight. Yah is great and he is greatly to be praised. We magnify, we lift him up tonight because he is worthy of all the praises. Um, again, we thank y'all for you all tonight. Hallelujah. To our YouTube family, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to you. To our Facebook family, same to you. Uh, we got a powerful study tonight, part three. We coming into the finale of the breakdown of the word. Y'all excuse me. I came in, laid down, well not sat, laid down, but sat down in my chair in the man cave and fell asleep. So I got up, I didn't change my clothes. I didn't do anything. I just got up and said, let's come on, let's get ready to do what y'all said to. So y'all excuse me tonight. Excuse my parents tonight. Praise y'all. It was very cold here where I am in the 20s. So we thank y'all anyway. Bless his name tonight. Um, tonight, we're going to deal with part three of this great study tonight. The word, the word, the word. The word is so very vital because when you break it down into pieces, it's broken down into pieces. It's like a pie. You you deal with the word as far as the actual um, where it comes from, which is the voice of Yah. That's literally what the word is. And it's translated in different perspectives from the written to the uh, prophetic to the uh, glad tidings to different things like that as far as the scripture books are concerned. But again, remember the word does come from the word Dave Hare, Dave Hare, which uh, literally uh, means the actual essence of it. And then it's spoken from the logos, which is the spokesman avenue of it. Then it goes from the spokesmanship into what is called rhema, which is revelation. And I, I believe that um, in this third part, we've dealt with the the Dave Hare, which is the written, you know, how Yah wrote it, how he said all manner of scripture is written by the inspiration of Yah for reproof, correction, in sound doctrine. But then, watch this, y'all. But then we've also dealt with the fact that the Dave Hare, the Dave Hare also, D A B H A R H A R, the Dave Hare also, Dave Hare, um, Minister Chico, D A B H A R, um, to you all that was with us in the first two parts of the study, you know where I'm talking about. If you don't understand, go back to parts one and two and you'll be have a clear understanding. But when you're dealing with the Dave Hare, the Dave Hare became written. The Dave word, Dave Hare is the master. Matter is the substance of what it is, and when we when we when we look in Scripture, we're looking at it from a Dave Hare perspective. First of all, we're dealing with the matter of the makeup of that thing. So we when we look in Scripture, whether it's in the Sefer, whether it's in the different books, uh, uh, um, the King James version or whatever version that you use, um, we have to understand that these versions are written from a Dave Hare Hebrew, meaning that it is the substance of the matter. So so when we look at word, we first thing we have to understand is Yah is giving it to us from a Dave Hare perspective. He's dealing with a matter, the matter at hand. He's giving... He's He's setting out the, the, the foundation, the precedence, praise Yah. And now when you go from the Dave Hare now, you begin to understand the Dave Hare because from the Dave Hare perspective, he now brings us into what is called the Logos perspective. The Logos perspective is the actual spokesmanship of the matter. So now he chooses different ones to teach or preach or prophesy. They all mean the same. Teach, preach, and prophesy means the exact same things. It comes from the Hebrew word nabai or nabai, which means to bring forth. 
So, so when he's dealing with us, he's dealing with us from the measure of the logos. The logos is the spokesman and the avenue of the spokesmanship is him bringing it forth. It's bringing forth. He's bringing forth what needs to be shama. Shama in Hebrew means what needs to be heard. So he brings forth, he chooses qualify. He chooses and qualifies different individuals. And you know that these individuals are qualified because they are full of the Rarak Hakadash. They're full of the Rarak Hakadash. So, so he chooses these men and women because he said, your sons and your daughters have the capability to prophesy. Again, the word prophesy means to bring forth. Now, that action or that individual that is prophesying is something called roway. Roway. Roway means that you're now speaking of the day hair, the matter that is written. You see it. You see. You're a seer. You see. Uh, Rama, you see revelation. So now you begin to row away. Your not buying, your bringing forth is a row away. It's a pro it's a portion of spokesmanship or spoken word from the perspective of seeing, of seeing. Now keep in mind. Thank you, niece. I'm going to take my time. Keep in mind that only a rarity of individuals have this capability to see and speak and not buy rhema. And these individuals are called prophets. They're called prophets. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Now me, I've been born a prophet. I was born a prophet from the birth. Praise Yah. When I was in the church, I, I was a prophet. When I, when I got outside of church, I was a prophet. In fact, that's why every time you deal with most of the stuff that I'm teaching is prophecy. It's prophecy. That's why a lot of people can't understand it because people don't understand prophecy. They're calling everybody and their mother prophets. that are no prophets. Prophets prophesy. Prophets see prophecy. Prophets bring forth things that the eyes cannot see and the ears have not heard. Hallelujah. So now, we understand. Let's understand this. So as he began to give us the day hair, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. He gives us the Dave hair, which is the matter. It's the matter. It's all the things that he composed. So now, remember, he does things decently and in order. So he takes the Dave hair. He takes the matter of it. So it's not scrambled. So it's not all mixed up. So it's not all confused. So it's not all messed up. He takes the Dave hair of it. And now he puts sense into it. He puts order in it. And now he brings it forth and allows it to be brought forth by qualified individuals. And those qualified individuals are called vessels of Yah. Now, the vessels of Yah, they will either Nava, they will either prophesy from Rhema, from Revelation, the word. Because they know prophecies of private interpretation. The word of Yahweh is of no private interpretation. So if a person calls themselves a prophet and the prophecy that they're bringing forth is not aligned in word, then that prophecy is a lie. And that person prophesying is a lying prophet. Praise Yah. Why? Because the prophets are qualified. Through the raw Kakadesh. And, and, and the prophets have the capability through the raw Kakadesh, the raw Kakadesh, to bring forth understanding of things, yea, even the deep things of Yah. Hallelujah. So you have to understand this. Watch this. You have to understand this. That now, when Yahweh begins to bring forth word, he brings forth his word from the perspective of the day power being spoken, and the spoken is either through the roe, meaning through the seer's eyes of what the scripture is saying, the in-depthness of what the Dave Hare is actually presenting, or it's through the rhema, the deeper revelation that Yahweh is presenting itself amongst the people. Praise Yah. And we have to understand, everything that the real prophets do, everything that the true prophets do, is word 
based. It is word based. It has nothing to do with your selfism. This is why a lot of people need to be delivered tonight because they are dealing in selfism. Most Christians are dealing in selfism. You can show them word. You can give them rhema. You can give them revelation. But they still were not geared to it because they're stuck in their traditions of their ways. And this is why a lot of people, even in this so-called awakening, needs to get delivered because they're still stuck in their ways and not in Yah's ways. When you get in Yah's ways, his word begin to take precedent. Hallelujah. Over your way. Over your attitude, over your character, over your being. So, so I didn't mean to go there now. I didn't mean to go there yet. Understand this. As we break down the word, the word gives an actual change or it shifts the atmosphere. In Jeremiah 1 and 12, he said he will hasten his word. To perform, and I'm only doing a little foundation right now. He will hasten his word to perform it. He will hasten, meaning that it's not going to take him a long time. It's not going to take him a long time, but he will hasten his word. In other words, in other words, when he spoke in the book of Bear Sheep, and he said, "Let there be," guess what? Immediately, it was. Now. He also in the book of Bereshith, the scripture says that as he began to move in the cool of the day, his word, his voice moved upon, moved in the presence of Adam and Chua, Eve. So, so his word was there from the beginning. And thence, henceforth now, he makes the declaration. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will always stand. Now watch this, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad people, those that got off, they're gonna miss this because we we great. I'm just laying foundation right now. We're gonna go a little bit deeper than where I am right now. We have to understand that the word holds different functionalities. In Jeremiah 23, 27 through 29. The word is declared as fire, shut up in bones. He said, is not my word as fire? Hallelujah. It is that same fire, watch this y'all, that was manifested in the New Testament, watch this y'all, of scripture. That same fire that same word in Jeremiah 23, 27 through 29, that he said, is not my word is fire, is the same word that was at the day of Pentecost in Acts the second chapter. Watch this, y'all. Go me to Acts 2. I'm going to take my time tonight. I'm not so much going to look at the numbers then I am going to look at the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm concentra concentrating on the, the word, praise y'all, because I want this to really sink into those who want this tonight. Acts 2, go with me to Acts 2, uh, Minister Chico. Let me show y'all something. Acts 2, because I'm, I'm, this is just foundation. We got to get, we got to break it all the way down so that when we get to what the actual word is, then we can understand where we are. Now watch this. The scripture says here in the book of Acts. Verse number two. Now, remember, Jeremiah said that the word is a burning fire in Jeremiah 23, right? Now, verse number two, it says, and suddenly in Acts 2 and 2, we're going to read Acts 2 and 2 and verse number down to verse number 4. And suddenly there came a sound from the Shemayim. Shemayim in, in Hebrew means the heavens. As of a rushing mighty wind. Watch this, y'all. And it filled all the house where they, who was the they? 
the apostles or, or the disciples that later became the apostles. Watch this. We're sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues or cloven languages like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Rock, Rock HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, other languages, as the rock gave them utterance. Stop right there. Watch this y'all. Watch this y'all. Watch this y'all. Watch this y'all. So the fire that was on their tongues was an endowment of and an overdosing of his word. It was the day path. It was the matter. It was the substance. There was a substance or a purpose or a measure that needed to be met. And I know ain't nobody been teaching this like this because I know this is coming from the Ruach HaKadosh because this is not in my notes. Hallelujah. So, so, so that fire that fell upon them in verse number three, tongues like as a fire, watch this show, was that same fire of the word that was spoken by Jeremiah. And I'm gonna prove that in a few seconds because I know I got some doubters. I feel your spirit. Watch this. I know I got some doubters saying, how can that be? Watch this. And he said upon each of them and they were all filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, they didn't speak out of control. They, they didn't speak out of control. You know why? Because the languages was controlled by the fire that was on their tongues. Watch this, y'all. And that fire that was on their tongues was the word. Watch this. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Hebrews, devout men out of every nation under the Shemayim. And when this noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that, listen to this, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Hallelujah. Now, they were speaking. The fire was on them. Now watch this. Jeremiah said, is not my word as a burning fire? Watch this. And they were marveled and amazed, saying one to another, Behold, not all these which speak are Yalileans. How, listen to this, how hear we every man in our own language when we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Dwellers in Mesopotamia, Yahudia, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phygra, Pamphylia in Egypt, in Mystrium, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, uh, and strangers of Rome, and the Hebrews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians, we listen to this. We do hear them. Watch this, y'all. We do hear them. Watch this, y'all. We do hear them speak. In our tongues, in our languages, the wonderful works of Yahweh, Mashiach, glory, hallelujah. In other words, they weren't just speaking in tongues like no, they weren't doing that. They were speaking because the fire, oh glory, was on their tongue, and that fire that was on their tongue was the word. So they begin to speak in our tongues the wonderful works of Yahweh. And they were all amazed and were in doubt saying to one another, what mean is this? These people are speaking the word. Let me teach tonight, y'all. They were speaking the word. They were speaking all the stuff we do in the church. 
Oh, he failed. No, they were speaking the word. Why? Because that fire. Jeremiah said, is not my word as fire. So when we get in Acts 2 and 3, that word fell on their tongue and that word was fire. Hallelujah. So they begin to logos. They begin to roll a. They begin to speak. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Yah. The wondrous works of Yahweh. They begin to speak in clear diction, in clear punctuality. The wondrous works of Yahweh, which is the word. Hallelujah. And this thing was so powerful. And that's why I tell people, he ain't no ghost. It ain't no Holy Ghost. He's a holy rock, Hakadet. He's a holy spirit. He's a presence. He, he's a presence. Hallelujah. So his presence fell on them. And his presence diluted and gave the fire, which is the word. And as they opened up their mouth, they began to speak. But they didn't speak out of control. The scripture said they spoke as the spirit, as the Rawak Hakadash, the spirit, gave them utterance. Hear me, my Christian brothers and sisters. On YouTube. Hear me. Hear me out. They didn't speak like we're doing in these churches. Huh? They spoke as the Rawak Hakadash. Hallelujah. Gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And words, they didn't speak out of control. They weren't. No, no, no. They weren't doing none of that. They spoke diction, clarity. They spoke word that was clearly from the most high. Almighty himself. They spoke word that people begin to understand. And they said, how is it that we hear? We hear. We shama. We shama. In other words, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. They begin to hear what the Spirit was saying. Are y'all with me tonight? They heard the word. The word was that fire. Remember he said in Malachi, he said, I will be a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. How do we, and I'm going to leave that right there because I'm going to come back and get that a little bit later as we go a little deeper into the study tonight. I will be a refiner's fire. And so, so the word fell upon their tongues. And as the raw cockadets began to speak, the fire, the word began to come out in clarity. And a complete diction. And so much they said, wait a minute. Are these men full of new wine? For Kepha, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, you men of Judea and all that dwell, I mean, I'm in, I'm in um, verse number 14, of Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem, be known as this, hearken unto my words. For you are, they are, these are not drunken as you suppose. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that that was spoken by the prophet Yoel. In other words, the word. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my rock, Kakadash, upon all flesh, my Holy Spirit, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So now the word fell upon them. The word came in the midst of them. The word began to stand up and magnify itself. Hallelujah. Through the rock, Hakadesh. Oh, bless his holy name. The word. It was the word. The word. Now I'm going to show y'all something. Show y'all something that's going to really, really kind of blow you away tonight. Some of y'all it may, some of y'all it won't. Praise y'all. Watch this. I'm going to show y'all that everything that is done, whether we call it spirit, whether we call it word, it's all going to, and it's all surrounded around one source. Watch this. Yahweh Shah said, he said in John 6 and 63, he said, it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing. He said the words 
I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. Now, Amos 8 and 11 says that there will come a time of a famine, a famine, a famine, a famine. There will come a time of a famine. He said, not of food and drink and water. Shabbat Shalom. Not of food, drink, and of water. He said, but the famine that will come in is of hearing the word of Yahweh. Hearing the word of Yahweh. He said, not of food, not of drink, not of water, but the famine that's going to come in prophetically is of hearing the word of Yahweh. Hearing the word of Yahweh. And I realized this. I realized this. I didn't, I didn't understand this till I began to really study this and break down what the word and who the word is. Even in this so-called Hebrew awakening, there is a famine in the midst of this Hebrew awakening where people are only coming into the knowledge of themselves, coming into the knowledge of being an Israelite, coming into the knowledge of maybe the name that they pronounce, but there's no awakening to the word. And Yahushua said, Yahweh, watch this, said, watch this. He said, watch this, he said this. He said, it is the spirit which quickens, which makes you alive. The flesh profits nothing. Watch this, y'all. He said, the word I speak unto you, they are ruach, they are spirit, and they are life. We got too much self gratification. Thank you, Dr. J. Too much self-gratification going on where we think it's all about being a Hebrew. How can you be a Hebrew and your soul is going to be lost because you have no connection to the Most High? Our ancestors died in their sins. Even though they had the Torah, even though they had the, they, they saw the miracles, even though they died in their sins. There was generations of our ancestors that died, Hebrews, because they had no connectivity to the word. And when I get finished, if y'all stay with me tonight, y'all gonna be like, whoa, wait a minute. They had no connectivity to the word. Judaism is not the word. You keeping the commandments is a portion of the word. There's a disconnect between the Hebrews and Yahweh. And he said it. In Isaiah 29 and 13, he said, this people, what people? These Hebrews, they draw nigh to me with their lips. And with their mouths, they do praise me as Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahuwah, and so on. Watch this. But he said, their hearts are far from me. Why? Because there's a disconnect in between the word. And who we are. You so concerned about self-gratification of being a Hebrew instead of being being or having the character of Yah Most High. You so concerned about how much language you know instead of having the fruits of the Royal Kakadash. You so worried about how many people are following me and listening to me, 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 me. Instead of being tied into the word. Hallelujah. You're a nation without no kingdom. Because you're not connected to the king of kings. Because your connectivity has been voided out. 
Because you voided out the word of Yahweh. You used the word as a back burner to back up your self gratification. When Yah said, My word is a burning fire, I am a refiner's fire, I am a full of soap. I'm here to destroy every sickness, every affliction. How many times you hear the awakening talking about healing, delivering? There is no healing. There is no deliverance because there's no connectivity in word. Everybody's so worried about I'm rabbi this, I'm bishop that, I'm apostle this, I'm moray that. Whatever happened to being servant? Huh? He didn't say good and faithful. He didn't say, well done, thou good and faithful pastor. Thou well, good, well done, thou good and faithful uh, more Well done, thou good and faithful prophet. Well more good, thou good and faithful apostle. More, well done, thou good. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. There's a connectivity, disconnected. There's a disconnection between being Israel and being holy as he is holy. Hallelujah. When you did, when you died into the word, hallelujah, your main purpose ain't about how much fringes you got on. Your main purpose on ain't how much book knowledge you have because gifts and callings come without repentance. Your calling and your election comes in because of your connection with the word. And I'm gonna show y'all. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Cause y'all and y'all and y'all don't even know where y'all don't know where the rock cockadash is even taking us today. Hallelujah. Watch this. Stay with me. 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 We have to understand who is the word. What is the word? Again, it's considered to be the voice of Yah, according to Genesis three, Rashid three. It's considered to be uh, 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 the actual voice of Yahweh as he spoke to Abraham, as he spoke, how do you watch this? As he spoke to Abraham, as he spoke to Moshe, as he spoke to Ezekiel, it's considered to be the word of Yah. Like fire in Jeremiah 20, where it said the word was in his bones like fire fire, shut up in his bones. Hallelujah. I know that feeling because I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm getting sick of Facebook. I'm getting sick of Facebook people. I'm getting sick of wishy-washy people. And after I get through the night, I'm, I'm, I'm unfriending a lot of other people. Praise Yah. I'm sick of the inconsistency of people. I'm social, spiritually social distancing myself. Why? Because the word is in my fire, is in me like fire. And I need to stay healed. I need to stay delivered. I need to stay whole. And I'm around contamination. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. It's considered to be fire. Now, that fire fell upon the tongues of those at the day of Pentecost, the day of Shabbat, it fell and it began to speak as the rock Hakadash gave utterance. Praise Yah. Even as we speak in the night, we're not speaking on our own words. It began to speak as the rock Hakadash gave utterance. So now, we have to understand what is this word? What is this word? We know it's considered to be his voice. We know that it was written on tablets because he said it is written. Man should not live by bread alone. But by every word which proceed out of the mouth of Yahweh. So we know that the words that he's speaking is 
Bread is the word by every word which proceed out of my so so we know it's written. So it's 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 his voice, it's his fire, it's his written, but we need a more deeper understanding of what this word is. What is this word? Hallelujah. This word is more powerful than what is spoken. It's more powerful than what is written. What is this word? We break it down this word, the word tonight. We only know word from, 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 from what's written in the Sefer or in the scripture book. But what is this word? Because there is a disconnect between Yahweh and we calling ourselves Hebrew. The just because you know a little Torah or you know a little law, hallelujah, glory to the name of Yah, doesn't mean that you have connectivity to the Holy One of Yahshua'ah. What is this word? What is this word? Because the word is missing. That same word that fell upon our ancestors. At the day of Shavuot, Pentecost, that word, that fire, it's messy. And what's happening is we don't want to hear this kind of fire. We don't want to hear this type of teaching. We want to hear some, some fairy tales and some, some story tales. We want to hear what some shock shock and rock fox and, and V fox said. Some Roman said. We want to hear some joker that's been copycatting off of Google speak. We don't want to hear what the rock Hakadesh is saying. Henceforth, there's a connection. There's no deliverance. There's no healing amongst the Hebrew nation. We're not praying because there's no connection in the Hebrew nation. Because we got a form of Yah. But we're denying the power thereof. And that power comes through the Rarak Hakadesh. Watch this, y'all. What is this word? Yahweh Shah said it again, John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that makes us alive. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They are life. And it's going to make sense in a few seconds, y'all. I mean, I'm going there. I'm, going, I'm getting in a few seconds. They are spirit and they are life. In the book of Psalms, 138. Watch this, y'all. 138. Psalms 138. Watch this, y'all. Hallelujah. Psalms 138. Psalms 138. Um, minister, we're going to go Psalms 138 and 2. Psalms 138 and 2. Let me show y'all something. We got people teaching about everything but the right thing. We got people teaching about aliens. We got people teaching about all kind of crazy mess. All types of things that does not pertaining to the salvation of man. We got people teaching about all kind of crazy stuff. What color is this person? What color is that person? What matter does what, what does it matter? We got all these people, all these things being taught because there's a disconnectivity between Yahweh and this creation. And the disconnect comes in is because we don't know what the word really is. Now watch this. He said in Psalms 138 and 2, I will worship toward the holy temple. He's talking about in the Shemiam, the heavens, that new Jerusalem, that heavenly Jerusalem. That, that, that Jerusalem that is written in Shabbat Shalom, Queen Adrian. That, that Jerusalem that is written in Hebrews 12 and 22. Watch this. I will worship toward the holy temple. Remember, you can only get into that temple when you elevate your praise. And your praise have to go into such a spiritual highness that you enter into extreme depth of worship. Extreme depth of worship. Watch this, y'all. I will worship toward the holy temple. Watch this, y'all. 
and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Listen to this. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So we see here that the word is of such vitality that he has magnified his word. Y'all please hear this tonight. He's magnified his word above his name. So, so even though we know the name of Yahweh, even though we know the name of Yah, the scripture says he has magnified his word Above his name. Woo! Did y'all catch that? Let me say it again. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name. Watch this, y'all. For thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above. Thy name. So he wants you to know that my name is the highest of high. But who I am, what I am, what I say is more higher than I. Uh, glory to his name. Glory to his name. Thou hast magnified thy word. Above all, thy name. Hallelujah. So the word is so vital and so powerful that it goes above the name of the creator. Above his name. And I'm going to show y'all why that is in a few minutes. It goes above the name of, it, of the creator. Watch this. The reason that this is, watch this, the reason that this is, is because of who and what the word is, who and what the word is, who, we get, we're breaking down the word, we're breaking this thing down, who and what the word is, who and who who and what the word is because I don't think we really understand who and what the world the word is. I don't believe I don't believe we really understand what we're dealing with when we're dealing with who and what the word is. See, this is why we're struggling. This is why we we're struggling trying to figure out what what to believe, what not to believe. Because we're not connected exactly to the word. We're connected to letters on the page, but we're not connected to the actual word. The word. Now, who is this word? What is this word? Watch this, y'all. Who is this word? And what is this word? Hallelujah. Because when you get connected to the word, to the word, you begin to understand his voice. You begin to understand what's written. You begin to understand that he is Ayah, Asha, Ayah. I am that I am. You begin to understand that no matter what condition and what position you're in, you'll find yourself that you're in the midst of the word. And he just said it. I magnify my word above my name. Now, my name is high. My name is holy. But my word, I magnify it above my name. Psalms 138 and 2. The word. Who is this word? What is this word? Who is this word? What is this word? Now watch this. Why did you say, yeah, that you magnify your word above your name? We know your name is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and we're safe. But you said even above that safety that there's even more power that comes through your word. Now watch this. There's something in here that y'all missed. And I know y'all missed it because I missed it. And I have to be honest. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it because I didn't. Y'all teachers, don't go ahead of me, please. I missed it because I missed what he said. Watch. 
I will worship Psalms 132. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. So first thing we have to understand is that the word is truth. Truth is always connected to the word. Truth is always connected. And y'all let me teach tonight. Truth is always connected to the word. Watch this, y'all. Let me say it again. I will worship toward thy holy temple. Now remember this worship is an elevation, an elevated worship that you can only do in the spirit. You can only get in the spirit, be in the spirit to receive this type of worship. It is actually the manifestation of what is spoken in Hebrews 12 and 22 when he talks about how we come. Now we've entered into Mount Zion in the city of innumerable Malachim's angels, huh? in the city in the presence of the living Elohim, Yahweh himself. Huh? In the presence of Yahweh Shah Hamashik, Hebrews 12, 22 down to 25, 26. This is that worship. Now, he said, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness, for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thine. So anytime you got word, word and truth is always connected. So, so, so Hebrew brethren, you cannot have or be a part of an awakening if you have. No truth. And your truth is not based upon what you read in a book, Googled, based upon no, 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 no. Individuals taught you the, the, the truth is connected through and to the word. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Go with me now to John 17. We're coming in. We're coming in. We're coming. We're coming closer. We're coming closer. Because we're going to break this thing down. We're going to break it down, break it down, break it down. Put your seatbelts on. Put your seatbelts on. <laughs> Dr. J said, are you ready? So y'all get ready for this. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Watch this. So word and truth is always connected with one another. You cannot have truth and not have word. And you cannot have word and not have truth. Okay? Watch this, y'all. Click, click. Put your seatbelts on. You cannot have word and not have truth, and you cannot have truth and not have word. Now watch this, y'all. Watch, 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 watch. Again, I'm going to read Psalms 138, 2. Then we're going to go to St. John 17. Watch this. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So the word is magnified above the name of the Most High Yah himself. So now, he's given us word, but inside of that word, he has decreed and declared truth. Watch the show. He's decreed and declared truth. Now, go to John 17 and 17, as we put this all together, so we can break down what the word is, what the word is. First of all, before we go to John 17, I'm sorry, minister, let's look at uh, 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 John, uh, 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 no, let's go to John 17, then we're going to go to John 1. John 17, then we're going to go to John 1. Watch the show. John 17 and 17. John 17 and 17. Yachanan, the book of Yachanan, 17 and 17. Let's watch the show. We study it tonight. This is a good study tonight. Watch this. He said this. In fact, uh, let me, let's read before that. Let's read verse 14 down to 17 so we can kind of get a little understanding of what the text is saying. He says, I've given them thy word, and the world hate them. This is why I don't get upset about what's going on around me, because I'm a word person. I'm a word man. Y'all's endowed this ministry for word, Sabbath School Live. It was for word. Five years ago, he gave us this for word. Five years going on, six years. Watch this, y'all. And I've given them thy word. And the world hate them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now, keep in mind, the world at that time was not white people. The world at that time was not Caucasians because when this scripture was written, it was written during a dispensation of time where Caucasians were not permitted in the inner courts amongst Yah's Yahadim. 
Remember, Cornelius and the Gentiles didn't get access until after the tester had died, which began the New Testament. When Yahushua, Yahweh Shah had died, then the Gentiles, the, the tent was rent. And the middle wall of petition was torn down. And now the Gentiles had asked. So at this time when he said the world hates them, he was talking about his fellow Hebrews. He was talking about his fellow Hebrew brethren that hated him. He was talking about the scribes and the Pharisees, the Sadducees. He was talking about these law-ridden people. Watch this. I've given them thy word. And the world hate them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Like I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm a Hebrew by nationality, but I am a son of Yah. I'm a Ben Yah. I'm a son of Yah. I'm the, I'm the son of the Most High. Hallelujah. I'm a servant of the Messiah. Hallelujah. I'm not a part of no, no nation, no group. I'm a part of the Most High Yah himself. Hallelujah. He said, they, they hated me even because I'm not of the world. I'm not of the groups. I'm not of this, this I'm not a part of this, uh, this, this so-called awakening. I'm not a part, none of that. I'm a part of the word. Watch this, y'all. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world. In other words, don't kill them. Don't let them die. But that thou should keep them from the evil. Keep them. In other words, Davis, you keep on, Jeremiah, you keep on teaching the word. Don't get caught up in all these groups and all these, uh, you ain't, just, I, like I said, I didn't come on Facebook to join no gangs. I didn't come on Facebook to join no fraternities. I came on Facebook to spread the word of Yah. So keep them. I'm praying that Yah keep us from evil. Watch this. They are not of the world. They're not of the groups. They're not of the camps. They're not of all these different so-and-so, so and so -ons. Even as I am not of the world. Watch this. Sanctify. Now the word sanctify means separate. Set them apart. <laughs> Through thy truth. Watch this, y'all. We're not trying to come up against nobody. We're just speaking what Yah said. Sanctify them. Through thy truth truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them. Separate them. Set them apart through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them. You're not going to be saying the same thing everybody else is saying. You're not going to be thinking everything everybody else is saying. You're not going to be teaching. You, you, you're sanctified. You're set apart. Hallelujah. Because the word of Yah is high above the name of Yah. Watch this, y'all. Who, what is this word? Thy word is true. Go with me to John 1. John 1. John 1. John 1. And verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And I know you knew where I was going with this, Pastor Sherry. So you cheated. <laughs> In the beginning, says you cheated. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Yahweh, Elohim. And the word was Elohim. Let me say it again. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Elohim and the word was Elohim. Verse two say the same was in the beginning with Elohim. Now watch this, going down to verse number 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only chosen of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when he says sanctify them, 
through thy word. Thy word is truth. He was referring to that word being Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So anytime you see the word, that's why the scripture says, if any man be in Yahweh Shai, the word, he or she is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Why? Because Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, the Hamashiach, the Mashiach, is the word. So, so when we become quickened, we don't become awakened to of us being Hebrews. Huh? How many times have you ever heard Yahweh Shah refer to himself as a Hebrew? How many times did he ever reflect on being a Hebrew? He always reflected upon being like his father. I and my father, we are one. Because I am the Logos. I'm the spokesmanship of the architectural identity of my father. I and my father, we are one. So he is the direct manifestation entity of spoken word. You and I are spoken entities of his word. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And I already covered, I, I covered that. That is the Dave Hare. That is the Dave Hare. D-A-B, the correct pronunciation is D-A-B, D-A-B-H-A-R. Dave Hare. I am the direct manifestation of word. So if any man be in the word, Yahushua, Yahawasha, Yahshua Messiah, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. All things are become new. And that was the Dave Hare that we was referring to in the beginning. The Dave Hare that we talked about in, in part one and part two of this study. The word. He's the manifestation of the matter. And it all centers around him. It ain't about no Hebrew. Our objection is to be like him. Now are we the sons, the binyas of Yahweh. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when he, the word, shall appear. We shall be like him and see him as he is. Watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. The word is Yahweh. The word is Yahweh Shah. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. Stay with me. Stay with me. I know y'all teachers itching. I know y'all itching. Because like they said, they says only two things that make a person want to teach and preach. A person that can teach and a person, person that can teach and a person that can preach. Or a person that can't. And I know that we definitely qualify too. So I, I understand. It's just same. Just same. Just same. Y'all hold your horses. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Watch this. So now. The word was made flesh. And it dwelt amongst men. So now, Scripture says, if any man be in the Mashiach, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things become new. And remember, he didn't quicken us to be Hebrews. He quickened us that we may be on the path of eternal life. Eternal life. He didn't quicken us that, that, that I'm a Hebrew or I know his name. No, because he magnified his word. He magnified himself above his name. Hallelujah. Moses knew him, Moshe knew him as, as Yahweh, but Abraham knew him as El Shaddai. They knew him based upon his word. Now watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Go to John 16. Let me show y'all. Go, go over to John 16 and verse number 13. Let me show y'all something. John 16, 13. Praise y'all. And now we're getting deeper into the lesson, into the study. Watch this. John 16, 13 says, How be it when he, 
Who? The word. The spirit of truth is come. So in other words, the word and the Rarak HaKadosh is basically the same. The word and the Rarak HaKadosh is basically the same. Rarak or Rawa or Rua means breath. The the haka the cock or the the rarak means the presence that gives breath that speaks breath that speaks life. So the word, when the word is inside of you, that is the rock inside of you. He said, "The words I speak unto you, they are spirit." And they are Haya life. They are Ruach and they are Haya. They are life. So, so that word being on the inside, see, see, you know why a lot of people can not, you know why a lot of people cannot are not are operating ineffectively? Because they are not connected to the word. They're not connected to Yahweh Shah. You know why people's character is all messed up, even though they're preachers and pastors and rabbis and bishops. You know what I mean? Their character is messed up because, because they're not connected to Yahweh Shah. Everything they think is carnal because Yahweh Shah is not inside of them. So, so and again, again, how be it when the spirit of truth, what is it? What is truth? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So the spirit of truth is the spirit of the word. How be it when the spirit of truth, the spirit of the word is come. Listen to this. That's why when he say he, see, we missed that all these years. The spirit of truth is the actual presence of Yahweh Shah. When he, the spirit of truth, who's the truth? Sanctify them through that truth. That truth is word. Who's the word? In the beginning was the word. The word was Yah. So Yahweh Shah is the word and Yahweh Shah is that truth. How be it when he, Yahweh Shah, in the invisible, incarnate perspective. God, watch this. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, come. He, will lead and guide you into all truth. Why? Because he's going to lead you into the oracles of himself. Because he is the word, he is the truth, and he is eternal life. Give me one second. I'm going to break it down even closer than what it is. And understand this, Any, even though I say Yah's spirit, Yah's spirit only means he's invisible. That's why he said, I gotta go. Because if I stay here physically, the comforter, the invisible spirit, the invisible thing that I'm speaking out of my mouth cannot come. Hallelujah. He is invisible. How be it when he, the spirit, the invisible presence of Yahweh through the word come. He will guide you into all truth, into more deeper of himself, into the deeper of his word, into the deeper of his life, into the deeper of eternal life. Watch this, y'all. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Speak, and he will show you things to come. Now watch this. People miss that because he said he will speak. What shall we so hear? Who is he hearing from? He's hearing from the eternal father, which he proclaimed to us in John, that no man has ever seen his shape or heard his voice at any time. He's referring to the ancient of days that is mentioned in uh, Daniel, the 13th, the seventh chapter and verse number nine and 10. He's referring to the one that gives him all power, all glory, dominion. Uh, Daniel 7, 13 and verse number 14. <laughs> we got too much scripture in our arsenal. Watch this. So now, so now we see the truth is being revealed. 
And the truth is the word, because he says, sanctify them through thy truth. And for thy truth is thy word. Now watch this. So now, now he begins to manifest himself. Remember, remember, on earth, the word became flesh and dwelt amongst men. And we beheld his glory in the flesh. But when he left up off the scene, he went back into his logos. Teach the night, y'all, form. Because he was the logos. He was the spokesman of word in the beginning when he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Genesis 1, Beersheath 1 and 26. So now he goes back and now he's now the comforter. It's his invisible presence that we call the Holy Spirit, that we call the Ruach HaKadosh. Why? Because he said, be holy for I am holy. So what makes it the Holy Spirit is because the holy of him is himself. So he magnifies himself above his name, which is his word. I know some of y'all can't digest this. I know y'all can't, but it's okay. Let it marinate. Think about it. Let it water. One man plant, another man water. Let y'all get the increase. Watch this. So now, he's speaking to us. And he said, he will show you things to come. So now, when he begins to minister, he's ministered from a prophetic perspective. But he wants to, and he has to magnify something called truth. Something called truth. Watch this, y'all. Truth. And that truth is what we have to live. We have to live truth. Listen to what Yahweh Shah said. He said in John 14, verse number six, he said, I am the way. The truth and the life. So truth is Yahweh Sha. Yahweh Sha is the word. Yahweh Sha is spirit. He's invisible. Spirit only means invisible. And they that worship him must worship him from the factor that he's invisible and in the fact that he is who he is. Truth. And truth has to be lived. In other words, we have to live Yahweh Shai from an invisible perspective. Spirit means invisible. You don't see it. For he is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. In spirit, in fact, he's invisible. And in the fact that he's written, gave declaration of himself through his word. So truth and word go hand in hand. And it's all connected to Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Watch this, y'all. <laughs> watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Watch, watch, watch. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. No man come unto the Father but by me. Hallelujah. Yahweh Shah is that truth. Yahweh Shah is the invisible presence of Yah, which is the Holy Ruach HaKadosh. Yahweh Shah is the Word. All of us connected, all in one. All connected in one. And he said it right here. He said in John 17 and 17, sanctify them through thy word. Sanctify them through thy truth. For thy word is truth. Watch this, y'all. Sanctify them through thy word, for thy word is truth. Now, he came along and John 1 said, in the beginning was the word, the word was Yahweh's word, and the word was made flesh. Now look what he said in verse chapter 14 and verse number 6. He said, I am the way, the truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. For that word is truth. I am the truth. I am that word. And the light, the high eye. No man come to the Father, watch this, but by me. It's all wrapped up in Yahweh Shah. The Christians, the theologians have tried to separate this. 
But the word is letting us know that they're all in continuity, one and all. The Ruach, the Spirit, the Word, and Yahweh Shah. Just like he was the Lamb. Just like he's the Savior. And just like he's the King of Kings that's coming back to redeem us off this earth. We try to borrow up who Yahweh Shah is. Spirit only means invisibility. Spirit means that he's invisible. Henceforth, we have to have faith. Because faith comes by hearing. Hearing words of what? Spirit. Words are invisible. You all don't, don't see words coming out of my mouth. You hear the words coming out of my mouth, but you don't see the words. So when you deal with word, word is invisible. Spirit is invisible. We don't see Yahushua, Yahweh Hamashik, but his invisible presence. I feel it right now. And this is why uh, Lady Adrian just typed glory. Because we recognize it that his glory is in the midst of us. His invisible presence, Shema, in Hebrew, the word Shema means that he's present, is in the midst of us. We keep trying to teach this stuff from Christian theological perspective, but Yah has given us the word of truth. And that truth must be lived. Hallelujah. The truth must be lived. The truth has to be lived. They that worship him must worship him in spirit. And in fact, he's invisible. And in the fact that he's the word. When did Yahweh Shah ever call himself a Hebrew? When did Yahweh Shah ever refer to himself uh, of any type of culture? He always referred to and spoke to us from kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. He always spoke to us from spirit. He said, listen, if I don't go away, the comforter can't come. Because that means I can't step into my invisible state. Of being the spirit of comfort. Hallelujah. What do you mean when he said, when he the spirit of truth? Now check this out. The Muslims, the Muslims teach that the spirit of truth was Muhammad. Huh? We know that's a lie. When he the spirit of truth. See, we know, and the reason why we keep trying to separate it, watch this, y'all. We keep trying to separate it because also we done got caught up in this Trinity doctrine. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That Holy Ghost stuff is a lie too. And he ain't no ghost. Ghost is an apparatus from the dead. Ain't no ghost. No such thing as no ghost. He's the Ruach HaKadosh. He's the Holy Presence. So when we're dealing with Yahweh Shah, when we're dealing with Yahweh, we're dealing with the invisible presence of the Most High Himself dwelling on the inside of us. Dwelling in the midst of us. So when we're dealing with truth, truth only lies within the most high. Truth only lies within the most high. And the Hebrew nation, the majority, has become disconnected from the most high. Have become disconnected Henceforth, the word is void and noise. So now you got a nation that the only thing that they can portray is that we're Hebrews. But they can't portray the Hamashiach, the Mashiach, because there's no spiritual connection. So now you got flesh ruling. And that is a ghost. That flesh that's ruling inside them, that's a ghost, y'all. That ghost is that dead man mentality of the dead Israelite ancestors that sinned against Yah. It is a ghost that they had. But it's not Yah's holy Ruach HaKadosh. It is a ghost of, 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 of tradition. It is a ghost. It is a dead man apparatus rising up from the dead of, of, of our ancestors that were sinning against the Most High. It is a ghost. But it is not the spirit. It is not the rock, Hakadash. It is a ghost. That's why you walk around here trying to look like Abraham, 
trying to walk around here with, with, with Abraham God looking like you got on Halloween costumes. Huh? That's why you walk around here walk, talking crazy, speaking words that you don't understand from the ancient. Huh? Because it is a ghost. That ghost is that ghost of our ancestors' past. That same ghost is the reason why we are in captivity because we got misdirected away from the truth through the Mashiach, the Hamashiach. Hallelujah. It is a ghost. Hallelujah. And we think because we change our names to a bunch of long, no offense to nobody if anybody on here has. We think we change our names to a whole bunch of long lanes. A whole, whole bunch of things. That makes us holy. Holy comes through the word. And the word is Yahweh Shah. Is Yahweh. Let me read it again. Just so you understand. Yachanan, John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. In order to have the healing that we need in order to have the deliverance that we need. We have to get connected back to the word. And the word is not just what is written on the page. The word is the Ruach HaKadosh, which the Ruach HaKadosh is the presence of Yahweh Shai himself. He is that spirit. He is that comforter that is speaking to us day and night. That's why the scriptures say, he that have an ear, let him hear, let him shema. What the spirit is saying unto us. He is that truth that the scripture said in Yachanan 17 and 17. Sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is truth. He is that truth. How do you know he's that truth? John 14 and 6 said, I am the way, the truth, that truth, and that life. No man come to the Father but by me. So we have to live that truth. And that truth is what magnifies itself. Watch this show. What magnifies itself above his name. That truth, that word. Hallelujah. The presence of Yahweh. The presence of Yahweh Shah. What makes him Yahweh Shah is he's Yahweh, our salvation. He's our savior. He's our redeemer. Watch this. And to understand it completely, we must understand that that truth, which is Yahweh Shah, must be lived. Say it again. Must be lived. We're so busy trying to live Hebrew that we're not living Yahweh Shah. Teach today, I don't y'all. We're so busy trying to live uh, with, with beards and all this stuff and all this stuff. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. I ain't condemning it. Instead of living Yahweh Shah. That's why we debating in vain. Praying, praying crazy, alienated prayers in vain. Lack of forgiveness in vain. Lack of love in vain. Lack of holiness, lack of lack of righteousness, because we're basing things upon the ladder and not the rock, the spirit. The spirit that makes you alive is the presence of the word, which is Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Therefore, if any man be in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So busy trying to be Hebrew and this, that, and the other, that we're not nowhere near the Messiah, the Messiah. Who was the spokesman, the word in the beginning that made us spoken, spoken entities? Oh, I'm awakened. I'm a Hebrew. You're a Hebrew, but you're full of the devil. Hallelujah. Yahweh said, I am that way. The truth. And the life. I got the truth. Well, my question to you is, if you have the truth, do you have your house shy? Do you have your house shy? 
Or do you, do you just have a form of religion? Do you just have a dress code? Do you just have a, 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 a beard and some, and, some, and some fringes? Do you have your house because that righteousness that came through the fringes in it was all rent because Yahweh Shai is our fringe. He is our righteousness. Hallelujah. And we're trying to teach y'all. We're trying to teach. We're trying to break it down. We're trying to, we're trying to break this thing down. See, but what's happening is we, we keep trying to, we have, tradition is a stronghold. Let me explain something to y'all. Let me break this thing down. Let me break it down. Let me, let me break this down. Let me break this down real quick. We are teaching. We are spreading this. And Yahweh already told me I got an uphill battle with this because this concept is going beyond the Hebraic concept. Now we're in the Yahweh concept. And the problems or the struggle or the stress what it is, when a person is teaching like this, we have to be all teaching on one accord because it takes a group of us to teach. And break these strongholds because, because, because the scripture said in Daniel 8 and 11 and 12 that the, that the lie is prospering over the truth. So now we got to get into the Mashiach, the Mashiach, the Mashiach is that truth. The Mashiach is that word. And when we begin to understand what the word is, in the beginning was the word, the word was Yah, the word was with Yah, the same as Yah, and the word was made flesh. When we begin to understand that Yahweh Shah is the word, and that we got to get wrapped up in him, then we'll see deliverance and progress. So henceforth we teach. Henceforth we teach. Because now, as we got into the final breakdown, of the word. The word is truth. And Yahweh Shah said in Yachanan 14 and 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What life? Remember, his purpose for us is that we have, have, have. The purpose of this is that we have the mindset of Yahweh. But the purpose of this is that we understand the premise of purpose that the Messiah have put in place. And the purpose of premise that Yahweh has put in place is that we receive eternal life. Again, Yahweh shall never refer to himself as a Hebrew. Yahweh Shah, y'all stop teaching over me, please, y'all. I'm getting, I, I'm, <laughs> Yahweh Shah never referred to himself as a Hebrew. You can't join into the Messiah. This is not a fraternity. You can't join into truth. You can't join, this ain't no organization. This ain't no group. We caught up in Hebrew stuff, and y'all never, when did Yahweh Shah didn't tell us to concentrate on being Hebrews? He told us to concentrate on being like him and, be, and having eternal life. That's why we have the problems that we have. Because now we got all these positions and no presence. You can't join truth. It's not a fraternity, it's not church. It's not an organization. It is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence of the things not seen. In other words, when you come in truth, you come into the faith. I'll teach tonight, y'all. Hallelujah. You come into faith. And, and that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh. How can you hear except you receive the one that he sent to teach? And how can I teach except I be said? How can you hear without a teacher or a preacher or a more or a pastor or a rabbi? And how can we preach, teach, or what have you except we be said? Now, when we're dealing with this word, word is truth. Truth 
is Yahweh Shai. And this word must be lived. The essence of truth is practical in its application of that truth, expressed or implied. Believers sometimes make assertions, especially in this awakening. We have the truth. What does this statement really mean? Watch this, y'all. What does this statement really mean? Does it mean that because I have given my mental or intellectual consent to a truth that I live that truth? This is not always the case. This is not what we see in society. Watch this. Regrettably, most of what is believed is not lived to the extent that it should be lived. Were that the case, the power and the might of Yahweh would have a profound influence in the life of the believers and the called out cordicium of believers, which is not. It's not. It's not. Let me give you case in point. Let me give you case in point. Say one of the brethren make a mistake and they confide in another brother, right? Yahweh said, if a man or woman is overtaken in a fault, you with your spiritual restore such one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself likewise also tempted. Watch this. We don't do that. We don't do that. When somebody falls short or somebody make a mistake, guess what we do? We talk about it. We pass it on. We subliminally pray about it. We talk about them. We put them. What the scripture says, you which are spiritual, you which is full of the word, what you which is full of Yahweh Shah, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. You know how many of these preachers, pastors, and rabbis I can really call out, but I won't. Because I love them. I'm praying for them. I want the better for them. Watch this show. You which are spiritual. Restore such a one. In the spirit of meekness. That's that Baptist preach spirit. That's trying to always call somebody out. That's that Pentecostal garbage. That's always trying to tell somebody about themselves. That's that. That's that. That's that church of God in Christ. Foolishness that's always trying to debate and bring people down. This ain't no awakening. This is a religious lynching with people who are not led by the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the word. They're not led by Yahweh Shah. They're not led by Yahweh. And I said it, and I'll say it again. This is a this is a spiritual lynching in the name of the Most High. And the devil is a lie. Why? Because truth is not being lived. Scripture says when you think that you are something, when you are nothing, you deceive yourself. In other words, when you think you're better than somebody, when really you got your own vices you need to get under control. You, you, you deceive yourself, buddy. This is a spiritual lynching. This is a spiritual, we, we, we under spiritual lynching. Calling it righteousness. And Yahweh spoke, Yahweh spoke against that in Malachi, the second chapter. In the last verse, he said, I have somewhat against you because you call that which is good evil and that which is evil good. Why? Because truth, the word, is not being lived. We think because we put it in our mental, intellectual uh, Rolodexes of consent that we have truth because I no longer call him Jesus. But yet I cuss. Yet I act a fool. Huh? We no longer call him Jesus, but yet I got hatred in my heart. I have unforgiveness in my spirit, but yet I no longer call him Jesus, but yet I don't know how to love my neighbor as myself. But yet I, but, but because I no longer call him Jesus, I have the truth. No, baby. You don't have the truth. You draw nigh unto him with your lips. Isaiah 29 and 13. And with your mouth, you praise him, but your hearts are far from him. Why? Because we don't have a connection to the word. 
Yahweh Shah said, I am the way, the truth and the life. He said in John 17, sanctify them through thy truth because your word is true. He is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was Yah. The word was, he is that truth. When we get wrapped up in Yahweh, then we're going to see truth being lived. Romans 13 and verse 16 says, put on your house, put on the word and make no provisions for the flesh. We're operating saying Torah, saying Yah and Yahweh in the flesh. Because we have no connection to the world, to the word, to the word. We have no connection to the word. We're operating in the flesh. We got beards. We got fringes. We didn't change our names to Hebrew names. But we have no connection to the word. We think the connection to the word is through the letter. The letter kills. But the Ruach, the spirit, it makes us alive. And the Ruach is Yahweh Shai. Therefore, if any man be in Yahweh Shah, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We got it. the truth that must be lived is we got to live Yahweh Shah. We got to live the word. We got to live him. If we was in truth. Were that the case, the power and the might of Yahweh would have a profound influence. In the lives, people will be this, this sick. Glory will be healed because the presence of the Ruach Kakadash, which is Yahweh Shah, which is the Word, it will heal them. You know why the shadow of the apostles healed the people because they were connected in word, in spirit, and in truth. They knew that even though Yahweh Shah wasn't there physically, in the spirit realm, he was there, dwelling on the inside, leading and guiding them into all truth, into all of himself, showing them things to come. Watch this, y'all. Firstly, let's understand this. When we're dealing with truth, truth has to be lived. And the only way truth can be lived is through your house shot. Not through no awakening, not through no groups. It has to come through your house shot. We have to understand that the truth of any statement or theorem is the testing and the application of that theorem statement. So if you're saying, I have the truth, you're saying that I have Yahweh Shah. And, and, and when you're saying I have Yahweh Shah, I have life. Haya. And when you're saying you have Haya, that means that when you speak, you understand that the power of Haya, life and death, is in your tongues. So you speak Haya. You don't put down, you don't backbite, you don't try to expose. Watch this. You, you, when exposure come forth, it's not coming forth from a man, it's coming forth out of the rock Hakadash. And now, this awakening has to be exposed because there's no connection to the truth. And the truth is Yahweh Shah, and Yahweh Shah is the word. So now, that truth statement or that theorem is now tested. In the application of the theorem of that statement. What are you saying? What are you saying, Jeremiah? I'm saying that when we have the truth, we don't magnify or manifest how Hebrew we are. We magnify and manifest how your Yahweh Shai is. We begin to let our light so shine before men. And they begin to see our good works. Which is tied into truth, which is tied into Yahweh Shah, which is tied into the word, and begin to glorify Yahweh, which is in the Shem I am in the heavens. Again, that truth, any truth of a statement or theorem is tested by the application of that statement. In other words, I can't say I have truth and I don't love, I don't forgive, 
or I'm constantly trying to expose personal information that my brothers and sisters have given unto me, saying the Ruach HaKadosh is to say it, to say it. Come on, teach tonight, y'all. Or, or we try to make a person look bad subliminally? No. When the, when the, when the theorem of, or the truth of that matter comes in, there's an application. The application begins to make a statement. You begin to forgive. You begin to you begin to forgive 70 times 7, not one time one. Shalom, nephew. You begin to forgive 70 times 7, not one time. You begin to speak truth. You start to avoid confusion, avoid mess, avoid, avoid debating, avoid confusion, because you know that the truth is not the author of confusion. Teach tonight, y'all. Hallelujah. You know the word is not the author of confusion. So you begin to apply. It becomes an application of that truth. I have the truth. Therefore, I am a servant of peace. He said, seek peace and pursue it. Follow after peace and pursue it. So now it's no longer about how much Hebrew I am. It's about how much word I am, how much Yahweh Shah I am, how much Ruach HaKadosh I am. It's no longer about me being a Hebrew. It's about the Ruach HaKadosh. It's about the spirit because the letter kills, but the spirit begins to make us alive. Huh? Yahweh Shah said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father. But by me. So when we say we have the truth, we have to understand that theorem is tested in application. And to be valid, a truth must be truth under all conditions. Not half, not partial, not some. You can't say you're a Hebrew and, 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 and that you got the truth. And you don't have the fruits. I heard you, Rabbi. I heard you. I heard you, Rabbi. Yes, who? What you said? You cannot say you have the truth, and 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 you are true Hebrew, and and you've not crossed over to Yahweh-ness. Because understand, being a Hebrew is only temporary, and Yahweh. Because as we live as Hebrews through the fruits of the Spirit, watch this. Through the fruits of the Spirit, through the fruits of the Ruach Hakadosh, then you know that your that your that your lifespan in the earthly realm is short. Because though our earthly tabernacles are Zala, we have another house that's not made by hands, eternal in the Shemayim, in the Hemi, in heaven. So now, watch this. So we find ourselves, we find ourselves, we find ourselves, we find ourselves now walking in truth. That listen, that we're not we're not just living, but we're living to live again. So now, 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 the truth that we live is under all conditions. It's not under partial. It's under all conditions. It's co it's consists of love. It consists of joy, peace, long suffering, temperance, goodness, faith, meekness. Against such, there's no Torah. Hallelujah. Secondly, because one believes in a particular doctrine, does not mean that that doctrine affects or influences the life of that individual. We're living to live again. And you being a Hebrew don't mean, oh, well, I'm a Hebrew. No, no, no. When you are Hebrew, when you know that you're the origin of Hebrew, but you are led in God by the Ruach HaKadosh, when you know that the Ruach HaKadosh is the truth, and that truth is Yahawashah, when you're led in God by the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the invisible presence of Yahawashah, all of a sudden, you see truth manifested in your character. Not in your words. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, little uh, 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 Jason. Bless you today, sir. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. Truth affects and influences the life of that individual. Yah, who show up? Yah, how is Yah? Never. How many times have you ever heard him call himself or refer to himself as a Hebrew? Huh? How many times have you heard him say, he said, I'm a Hebrew. You heard Paul say it. I'm an Israelite. I'm a Yashualite from the tribe of Benjamin. But you didn't hear Yahweh Shah say that. Why? Because his focus and his purpose was not on so much being a Hebrew. His focus was upon showing you the customs and the ways of the Hebrew as far as the Shabbat keeping, eating clean, and so on. But his purpose was to lead and guide us into the kingdom. And he didn't talk about no kingdom on the earth. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in the Shemiah, in the heavens. He was not referring to no kingdom as far as he was talking to us. He said in Luke 22 and 31, 
He said, I've given you a kingdom that you may come and sit and eat with me in my kingdom. And you will teach the 12 tribes of Yisrael. So if you're stuck in just being a Hebrew, guess what? I'm going to be teaching you. So we're going to be teaching them. Our, 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 our objective and projective is not stuck in just being a Hebrew. Our, the truth of the matter is that we're in Yahweh Shah. And Yahweh Shah said in Revelation 3 and 21, he that overcome, will I grant you to sit with me in my throne, even as I have overcame and I'm sat down in the throne with my father. And he said, I'm going to invite you to my table. And you're going to eat and sup with me in my table. Luke 22 and 31. And I will give you to teach the 12 tribes of Yisrael. Hallelujah. My goal is not being a, 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 a Hebrew Israelite. My goal is to become a part of the Elohim family. And this transfer of Ruach comes through the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the truth. For when he, the spirit of truth, comes, it leads and guides you into all things, all truth, and shows you the things which are to come. Hallelujah. It don't put you in the past. It focuses on that which is coming. Because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered in the hearts of men. The things that Yahweh has prepared for us, but has revealed unto us. Yea, the deep things of Yah, the all truthness of Yah. We're going to the kingdom. We're going to the throne. We're sitting in the table with Yahweh shot. Read it, Luke 22 and 31. We're going to be teaching the 12 tribes of Yahshua. Our calling and our election is higher than just being a Hebrew Israelite. Huh? Teach tonight, y'all. Many doctrines and biblical concepts are intellectually believed, but most often than not, they are not allowed to have the life-changing influence on the spirit and heart that they ought to have. We're talking about the spirit. The spirit shifts the atmosphere. The spirit changes the, the, the plan. The spirit takes us from flesh into eternity. From the beginning, Yah's intent for his creation was that we have eternal life. Read Genesis 3 and 22. Read when he gave the Holy Rock Hakadesh. Everything was always pointing to eternal living. But you cannot have eternal living, living in your flesh. And a lot of his teachings are flesh, are fleshly. Henceforth, there's a disconnect between mankind and the truth. Mankind and the word, because the word is that truth. <laughs> Many people believe that the Messiah should be served. That one's life should be yielded to Yahweh. Yet said and believe sometimes when this is done, you'll see a noticeable effect on their lives. One writer in a book, um, he wrote this. And let me read this, y'all. Let me read this. He said, knowledge divorced from experience must dwell in the realm in doubt. In other words, biblical knowledge and experience work together. How? Because biblical knowledge is learned. Then the word must be mixed with faith and conviction. So in other words, what the writer was saying was that knowledge divorced from his... In other words, you cannot understand what truth is unless you have a connectivity to the truth. And when you have a connectivity to the truth, your knowledge of that truth brings forth an experience. And that experience causes you to exercise something called faith. And he lets us know that faith is not just faith alone, but faith has to have what is called corresponding actions. And that corresponding actions is called works. So faith without works is dead. 
So you have to, in order to understand how to live truth, you have to have faith. And the faith that you portray must be followed by works. Most religions, Christianity especially, and I see this also with um, this Hebrew awakening, tends to emphasize idealism to the exclusion of realism. Let me say that again. Most of these religions, Christianity and this so-called Hebrew awakening stuff, tends to emphasize idealism in the exclusion of realism. Herein lies the distinct difference between those that are chosen and those that are of the religious faiths. We have to understand that again, salvation is complementary. And in being complementary, we have to understand that there's a version of truth or connectivity to what truth is that brings forth deliverance. And that deliverance takes us from the idealism thought concept. And it places us into realism. We know that Yah is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We know that, 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 that in order to live for him, we must present and represent and manifest. Fruits of the spirit. That is truth. That is realism. Idealism says. Because of what I know. Because of what degree I have. Because of who my name is. I have truth. No baby. Truth must be lived. Somebody type that on your screen. Truth must be be lived. Faith and realism goes together. And it progresses through the avenue called works. So now faith with works avail much. Abraham became the father of all nations because he took realism mixed with faith and works and became a friend of Yahweh. Why? Because he lived. Not only did he express truth, not only did he proclaim he was in truth, but he lived truth. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. Truth is lived by faith. Truth is lived by faith. Not what you know, not how many degrees you have, not what you Googled, not what your knowledge is of this, that, and the other, but truth is lived by faith. And truth must be lived. And the faith can't just be faith, but faith has to have corresponding action. Let me give you another example. And then I'm going to let y'all go. I might have to come back for part four tomorrow. Mixed into with the other study I got tomorrow. The truth comes. Watch this, y'all. Even in our character. Watch this, y'all. And some of y'all ain't going to like this. I didn't like it when I read it, when I read the scripture. I didn't like it. Because I'm tired of people acting in the flesh against myself. And then I just have to be quiet and say nothing. But guess what? I have to. Because if I'm walking in truth, you have to. What do you mean you have to? Watch this, y'all. In the book of Matthew, let me show y'all something. This is some deep stuff, y'all. <laughs> Matthew 5, 11 and 12. Watch this, y'all. Matthew 5, 11 and 12. We talking about living truth, y'all. This is some deep stuff. You know, I'm going to tell y'all right now, I come from the streets. <laughs> I'm used to throwing these. But now, walking in truth, walking in the Messiah, walking the word, I got to do this. I have to take these, put them together, and they become this. 
Why? Because, watch this, y'all. And your faith is what helps you live this truth. Watch this, y'all. According to the word. Look what he said here. For example, the scripture says, blessed are ye. Matthew 5, 11 and 12. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Listen to this. Rejoice. They done talked about you like a dog. They done put you down like a dog. We're talking about the word. We're talking about living your house shy. We're talking about living in truth. We're talking about truth being lived. So say, all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Not be mad. Not cuss. Not always want to call somebody out. Watch this. Rejoice. And Rabbi, you can put this in, your, in, 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 in the, in the quorum of, of, of guidelines of what we must live by. Rejoice. And be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in the Shemiah. For so persecuted they, the prophets that were before you. Again, Matthew, 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 5, 11, and 12. Now, it is not nobler to live the reality of those words than just to know them. In other words, in other words, we could quote it all day, but we have to live it. Watch this show. It is not nobler to live the reality of those words than to just know them. Nobler, remember those words when we have been falsely accused, talked about, put down, beat down by others. Remember this, the great intensity at those who have wronged us, even though sometimes we pass the test. Even though we know that they're going through great extent to hurt us. Even though we know that they have wronged us. Even to the greater extent, we want to go to the extent to hurt them back. Make them pay for their errors. Watch this show. Those who refuse to admit that sometimes they fall prey to such human weakness are not honest with yourselves. We talking about truth. Word, Yahweh being lived. These are the character that Yah is looking for us to not only portray, but to manifest itself amongst all mankind. By this, men know that we are his disciples, his disciplined ones, his apostles, his mores, his, his rabbis, etc. By the love we have, one for another. What is the lesson here? And I'm about to close. Is it not to know what is known so much as what is done that counts? Our incredible task, give me this, y'all. Our, our incredible task is to learn how to live a dynamic, Yahweh centered life. Not to just know truth, but to live truth. It's easy to tell somebody what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. But can you live it? Hebrews, can you live it? Because you're not. You got respect the person. You have zeals not according to knowledge. You're teaching things that's not word. You're putting in the atmosphere doctrines that are coming out of the books of, of Romans and, and Scythians and all type of things. And people are following this mess as though it's the word of Yah. You're criticizing, putting people down. We're supposed to live a dynamic Yahweh, Yahweh Shah centered life. Not just to know truth. The fact is knowing precedes doing. Or, or knowing precedes being. But being is a process. That process is 
is a style that is not mentioned or understood amongst this awakening. We're to live a processed Yahweh, Yahweh shot style life. And that process will bring us into the actualization of the realism of the day power, the matter, or the precept, or the concept of word that Yahweh placed upon us in the very beginning. Doing impacts our spirit. Righteous acts energizes our spirit. And it brings us into the right relationship with Yahweh. His fault, we need to get connected back to the word of Yah. As I close, it was a constant thing in the teaching or prophesying or preaching of the Hebrew prophets to warn the people that the practicing of rituals without a change of heart was meaningless. I'm almost finished, y'all. Give me just one more minute. I'm out your way. In the book of Isaiah, we find an example of this. The priests and the people were offering sacrifice. I just want to show this. This is what's going on amongst us right now today but not with the right heart. In Isaiah 1, 11 through 13, he said, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Saith Yahweh. I am full of burnt offerings and rams, the fat fed beasts. I delight not in the blood of your bullocks or your lambs or your he goats. In other words, I'm not, I'm not, comfortable. I'm not satisfied with you with just because you wear fringes, just because you have a beard, just because you speak my language. Watch this, y'all. I'm not satisfied with that. Watch this. I'm not satisfied with that. When you come and appear before me, who have required this of your hand to tread my court? Listen to this. Bring no more oblations. Incest is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Shabbats and the calling of your assembly, your groups, I cannot hear. It is iniquity. Even your solemn meetings, your groups, your, 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 your coming together. Watch this. Isaiah 11, 1, 11 through 13. Now, after this denunciation, denunciation, what did Yahweh offer as a solution? Because remember, 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 remember. He wants to deliver us so that we can be ready and wrapped into his kingdom. Watch the show. His solution came in Isaiah 1, 16 and 17. Again, we talk about truth being lived. He said this, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from my eyes. Cease to do evil. Stop your debating. Stop your arguing. Stop your putting your brothers and your sisters down. Stop your evil. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Now we're build character, not your reputation. Learn to do well. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Isaiah 1, 16 and 17. The Messiah also made a point to drive home this same fact, the word, the truth, the light. Look what he said. He said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land and make on a, a, make on a proselyte. And he, when he come into you, when he come into your groups, he come into your awakenings. Not only is he not only a twofold a part of you, but now he's twofold more of a child of hell than yourselves. Matthew 23 and 15. Let us note that the study of biblical truth, scripture truth, is not the same as the study of laws of chemistry, physics, or mathematics. In the study of these subjects, please understand, one looks at the cold abstract of the theorems. 
the formulas and the laws. This is sometimes done with a cold detachment. And there could be no attempt to live those laws. What are you saying? When the word, when you have a shot, when the Ruach HaKadosh is not the main forefront, the application of worship and servitude is cold and detached. Therefore, you have no truth. <laughs> oh, glory. But with Yahweh's words, his power must come alive. With your, the presence of Yahweh shot, his words must come alive. His love must come alive. His ways must come alive. It is a whole different world. It's a whole different world. Some study the Bible as history. One can never be understand Yahweh when that approach is taken. Even in our Sabbath school life, one's mind and spirit must be over or won over by Yahweh's for the word to have its intended. Effect. I'm going to end it on that. The essence of this lesson is that there's a difference and a vast difference between facts and truths. What are you saying, Maury, as we close? I'm saying that we have been living our lives based from facts and not the truth. I even had some pastors on here and I saw them putting their little words up. You can't teach over the teacher. The bottom line is this. Yahweh Shai is the word. He says, sanctify them through thy truth for thy word is truth. Watch this, y'all. Bless you, bless you, Dr. Noel. Sanctify them through thy word for thy word is truth. Scripture said in the beginning was the word, the word was y'all, the word was with y'all. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst men. The flesh said in Yachanan 16 that I, ha I have to leave physically because if I don't go, the comforter can't come. But when he, the comfort, the spirit of truth comes, he will lead and guide you into all truth and show you things to come. So, so Yahweh Shai was here physically, went back into the incarnate, invisible state. And now his essence, his spirit is amongst us. And that spirit is the word. So every time we speak Yahweh Shah, we're speaking the word. And it is Yahweh Shah that revives us, that quickens us, that makes us alive. And he makes us alive unto Yahweh Shah, not Hebrew. He, 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 he resurrects us into himself. So now him being the truth and the life, guess what? We are now sanctified and placed into being the truth and the life. In other words, we become the only ones who have access to the Father through living the truth, speaking the truth. Being in the truth. This study is intended to enrich our spiritual lives and make us want to press on to higher heights and deeper depths, not just being a Hebrew. Watch this. It seeks to have us develop a right relationship through the word, through Yahweh Shai, through the Ruach HaKadosh, with Yahweh. We must not only hear of him, we must know him and practice his truth. His power-packed blessings awaits us, especially in the kingdom. He is ready to bless us when he see that we have now learned how to let our light so shine. The blessing is in doing Yahweh's will. The Father who is Yahweh, will teach us to serve and get out of the pretense and hypocrisy that is not a part of the Ruach HaKadosh. There's too much phony, 
fake and falseness going on. And righteousness is hid behind a religious concept and not the truth and way of mighty Yah. Yahweh Shah said, I am that way. I am that truth. And I am that life. I am that way. That righteous way. I am that truth. I'm the word. I'm the Ruach HaKadosh. I'm the presence of Yahweh. And I am that Hayah. I am that life. No man can come to the Father. But by me. Truth must be lived. Yahweh Shah must be lived. His word must be lived. I want all y'all to know the words and the word of prayer. Pray my strength in Yahweh. Yah has extended his mercy. The loving hand of Yahweh is still outstretched. He comes and he says, come, let us go and find the blessings. It's not found in a group. It's not found in a, in a religion. It's not found in a church. It's found in him. It's in him that we live. It's in him that we move. And it's in him that we have our being. Father, we thank you tonight for the move of the Ruach HaKadosh. How you have moved tonight, not by might, nor by power, but by the Ruach HaKadosh. We thank you tonight, hallelujah, for your holy presence that's in the midst of us right now. Yah, we stand on your word. We may not have a lot of friends after teaching like this, but Yah, we stand on your word. We're not in this thing for popularity. We're not in this thing for favor of man, but we're in this thing to do this according to your word, to speak truth, that men and dying men and women may come unto you and say, what must I do to be saved? Yah, save your people, oh Yah, according to your will. Save your people, Yah, according to your way. If it is your will to save, Yah, save today, Father. We ask this in your holy, hallelujah, and righteous name right now. Father, we pray healing. We pray deliverance. We pray increase, Father. Hallelujah, according to your will, oh Yah. Let your will be done all day, every day, no other kind of way. And we will be so careful to give you praise, hallelujah, give you glory, hallelujah. We magnify you. We lift you up because you are Yah, and you are Yah, hallelujah, alone. We bless your name according to Psalms 40 and 16 when you say your hallow be magnified we magnify you right now let your power let your demonstration of your power go forth not in us but through you Yah. let the Ruach Kakadesh have its way even those that are in Facebook land even those that are in YouTube land let your will be done Yah. and we will be so careful tonight to give your name praise give your name glory give your name honor in the name of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach Yah, bless your children everywhere. Bless your elect. Bless your chosen. That we may be vesseled honors in your kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in the Shemiah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yah, tonight. Praise your name tonight. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for your word tonight. Because you spoke unto us, O Yah. And we shall not. We hear what you're saying, O Yah. Thank you tonight, O Yah. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray, Yahshua the Messiah. Please let the words of our mouths, meditations of our hearts, be acceptable, hallelujah, in thy sight. Oh, Yah, our strength and our redeemer. And we say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So be it, and so shall it be. Selah. Bless the name of Yah tonight. Hallelujah. Thank y'all again for everyone that's on the line with us. Thank y'all for everyone that stayed with us through the duration. Praise Yah. Thank y'all that's hungering and thirsting after righteousness. We say bless you tonight. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom to each and every one of you. Praise Yah. We thank Yah for the move of the Rarak HaKadosh. Thank Yah. Hallelujah. That his spiritual manners, the spiritual matters are being taught amongst us. He's shifting the atmosphere in our favor, but we have to stay in his word. To y'all be the glory for every word that was spoken. To y'all be the glory for every manifestation of clarity that he gave. To y'all be the glory 
for the increase of understanding through the Ruach HaKadosh. To Yah be the glory. Hallelujah. I thank Yah today for his deliverance power. I thank Yah for everything that he is doing. I praise Yah for each and every one of you. I thank Yah for how he shifted the atmosphere. Even in my home, I thank Yah for my wife. I thank Yah for my grown children. I thank Yah for my grandbabies. I thank Yah. I just praise Yah tonight. He is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our Yah is worthy to be praised. It's in him that we live. It's in him that we move. And it is in him that we have our being. I thank y'all for the Shabbat. This day of rest. See, you won't understand the Shabbat if you don't work. And if you don't work, you don't eat. But I work hard. I work extremely hard. And I thank y'all for this time of rest. I wasn't going to come on tonight. But the word was in my heart. Like fire shut up in my bones. I couldn't even sit and be comfortable trying to rest because that word was in my heart. Said, so you got to bring this word out tonight. Praise God. So we pray that everyone has been blessed. Praise God. We know that no weapon formed shall prosper. We know that no weapon formed shall prosper. I'm going to leave you with this. His compassions we have hope. Lamentations 3 and 21. Therefore, we have hope. His compassions fail not. Great is his faithfulness towards us. If any man be in the Mashiach, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Meaning, anything that you've done in the past, even if it was yesterday, if you've come into the Messiah or come back into the Messiah, those things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. No weapon form, no sickness form will prosper as long as we stay in the Messiah, in the Messiah. It's all about the Messiah. It's all about Yahweh Shai. It ain't about no groups. It ain't about no, no, no fraternities. It's about the most high. It's about the Messiah. He said he'll keep us in perfect peace as long as we keep our minds stayed on him. That's all I got for y'all tonight. May y'all bless you. I'll see you tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11.30 Central Time, 10.30 uh, Mountain Time, 9.30 Pacific time. We'll see you tomorrow at 1230. May y'all bless you all. May y'all be with you. May the shimmyum smile upon you. Let this word meditate. Again, the breakdown of the word. This was part three, the finale. If you missed parts one and two, go on my page or either go on Sabbath School Live Ministry page and you can review it all over again. Y'all bless you all tonight. I love y'all. I do. I love y'all. Let us continue to love each other. Let us continue to strengthen each other. Let us continue to support each other. Let us continue to say encouraging words to each other because the power of life and death is in our tongues. We have power of word. Speak life. Speak encouragement. Speak uplifting. Because that is the way of the Most High. To my YouTube family, I'll see y'all tomorrow at 1230. Yahweh bless you. Love y'all so much.